Hi, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a single tooth guided implant surgery from start to finish. In this case, I used the Blue Sky Bio planning software to do all the planning and the guide fabrication, and then the surgery was carried out using the single drill protocol with the Blue Sky Bio one cut drills. I do 95% of all my implant cases this way now, and it's really made our implant surgeries more efficient and more accurate, which results in a better outcome. This is how the patient initially presented. He had an upper left first molar with long-standing pain to biting, and the cone beam scan revealed extensive pathology around the tooth. All indications from probing and everything else were that the tooth was cracked, and so it was decided just to remove the tooth and allow it to heal naturally without any grafting due to the extensive infection. Here we have our patient after six months of healing, so now it's time to do the work in the software to create our surgical guide. So the way that we do that is we merge an STL model. As you can see, this has been merged very accurately. If we turn on this, you can see the outline following closely to the teeth. And once we've done that, we can turn off the 3D rendering. So now it's time to plan the implant position. I've already done that. So if we turn this on and the abutment, we can see that this is emerging. Uh, through an ideal prosthetic position, if you want to verify that further, you can put in an artificial tooth and evaluate how the, the implant will emerge through that. And if we evaluate the implant itself, we can spin around its axis and make sure that we are fully in bone all the way around. So this is a 5 by 8 implant. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and turn all of these things off and design a surgical guide. So as you see here, we've designed the surgical guide. You'll notice that there is a stop built into the guide itself. And this is what will depth limit us when we're doing the actual surgeries. The handpiece will bottom out on this, and that will be the extent of our osteotomy depth. Once the guide has been designed, it's exported out of the software and uploaded to any number of labs to be 3D printed. And here you can see the 3D printed guide being tried back onto the stone model and we're verifying that it does have a very accurate fit. You'll notice the windows that are cut out around the teeth which allow me to verify complete seating against the model. And you should take great care to make sure that it's seating the exact same way inside of the patient's mouth. All that's left to do prior to the surgery is to put in the appropriate guide tube and I'll often place a drop of super glue prior to placing it just so that it won't tend to come out during the procedure as I'm drilling. And here you see the tube in place with the one cut drill inside of it. These have a very intimate fit allowing for creation of the final diameter osteotomy with just a single drill. And here you can see the fit of the guide being verified in the mouth prior to surgery and again this should fit exactly as it did on the model. So now it's time to do the surgery and I'm making my initial incision through the crest uh, full thickness and I always make this a little lingually displaced because I want to be able to roll all that tissue to the buckle and not have the incision line sitting directly over the implant site. Uh, so you don't have to make a big flap, you really just need to reflect this just wide enough that the uh, flap will clear the guide during the surgery. We don't need to visualize the entire buccal portion of the bone because we've already done our planning in the software. There's no need to do any more traumatic surgery to, to visualize that. So that's plenty enough reflection. You can see there's no releasing incisions of any kind. And you can see the crest of the bone in this picture. So now I'll seat the guide in the mouth. And you'll notice this has a very snap fit as I place it on. So press it in very tightly, make sure that it's fully seated. You'll notice I'm visualizing with the mirror the, the little windows that are created in the guide. This tells me that it's going to be completely seated. And now we'll go ahead and proceed with making our osteotomy. So I've got the short one cut drill. We'll place that through the tube and I'm using heavy irrigation. And you'll notice I also do a lot of pumping motion. We don't want to overheat the bones, so I just go a millimeter or two at a time. Uh, with my progression into the bone. Heavy irrigation, I always remove it completely and have my assistant irrigate inside to make sure bones get into the very bottom of that to keep everything cool. And this patient actually had some fairly dense bone considering how uh, infected that site had been six months ago. 
we'll make a few more penetrations and we don't have to worry about going too deep because there is a printed stop on the guide itself so all we have to do is just sink the drill until it bottoms out onto the guide itself and again this assumes that you're using the blue sky bio handpiece the x tube handpiece and their one cut drill system everything is pre-programmed for those so that was the completion of our osteotomy. You know, so it was very quick. I'm taking an instrument into the osteotomy, making sure that there's no sinus perforations. And just as planned, there was not. Uh, it was to the full depth. And here you see the osteotomy exactly where we planned it. And now it's time to place the implant. This is a Blue Sky Bio Max 5x8 implant. And so I've got my handpiece set on 40 newton centimeters of torque. And as you'll see, I begin placing it. And right there it torques out. And I'm only about halfway seated. So at this point I had to get my hand ratchet out and seat it the remainder of the way. And this had really high initial stability. I would bet it was probably up around 70 or 80. So just hand ratchet this in until it's at your desired uh, vertical height. I plan this to be about a millimeter to half a millimeter subcrestal. Take a look and make sure that you're not going too deep or too shallow with it. And we'll give it a couple of more turns and that should complete the placement of the implant. Place on the cover screw on this. I like to get primary closure with my implants. It just allows for more predictable healing. I don't have to worry about the patient loading it during the integration period. Um, and it's just led to more predictable results. Here's our implant in place. And here it is on the x-ray. And with final closure, these were just three individual cytoplast PTFE sutures. And the big question is, is it accurate? So what I'm doing here is with Photoshop, I'm overlaying the planned position with the actual. And as you can see, it was exactly as planned. If you're interested in learning more about this technique, check out my YouTube channel, which is Inquiry Glenn on YouTube. Uh, I've got lots of videos on there if you're interested in doing some really intense hands-on training and in guided surgery, and in particular, learning the Blue Sky Bio software. Uh, we do give some Blue Sky Bio exclusive courses fairly often around the United States. Um, just call my office number, which is on the screen, and we can help you find out when the upcoming courses are.